Welcome to your weekly UAS news update, and this is week 72. And this week, I've got three topics I want to talk about. The first one is the new special FAR that the FAA issued this week actually does not include anything about remote pilots. So we'll talk about what consequences this is going to have uh, going forward. We'll talk about a, a waiver that was received by North Carolina, the, the Department of Transportation, to inspect bridges beyond visual line of sight. And this is actually a really interesting topic. And then lastly, kind of something fun, I guess, uh, talk about the, the combination of a surfer plus a drone that's uh, making sharks hungry. So let's get started. <music> Okay, the first thing this week is the FA and the special FAR. Uh, the special FAR is something that is very rare and that the FA did, I think, back in April or May of this year. And, um, and, and this can happen when, I guess, uh, special circumstances happen, which, uh, as we all know, there's a lot of special circumstances in 2020 at the moment. But the FA basically said that if your remote pilot certificate expired between March and September of 2020, the end of September of 2020, then you had the ability to renew the certificate by going online and taking a, a quiz. Now I'm saying renewing certificate, this is not correct, I should say the right words, which is a renew the currency to your certificate. Your certificate doesn't expire. But to renew the currency on your certificate, you could do a test online and that would basically extend your currency by another six months, at which point you would have to go to a testing center and take the actual test. And this happened because, well, a lot of testing centers were closed in the country and you just couldn't find one open to do the, the currency. Um, now the FA is issuing a new SFAR or creating extensions to the existing SFAR, but um, not for remote pilots. So this is it, that, that extension that we got uh, for people that had the expiring certificate between March and the end of September, uh, that no longer is the case. So if your certificate expires after this, October 1st and, and, and forward, then you're gonna have to do the test in person in order to get current again. This is really it. So uh, I, I was going to add something else, but now I forgot. Uh, so if your certificate expires starting in October and, and going forward, then you have to find a testing center. The good news is there's actually a lot of testing centers that are available out there. So I recommend that you just go and, uh, and find one and then take the test. But yeah, no more exception at this level. The next thing I want to talk about is the North Carolina Department of Transportation that received a beyond visual line of sight waiver to fly under bridges. Now, a little bit of backstory here. We've seen beyond visual line of sight waivers. I've been talking about BV loss for quite a while now. But in this case, uh, flying under Part 107 and getting a beyond visual line of sight has always been something that's kind of uh, complicated because you need to have expensive radar equipment that can find other aircraft in the area and avoid them. And, um, and so this was not something that was cheap in order to get and or you actually needed to have a visual observer in order to do this. So this is somewhat of a first here uh, with what's going on in North Carolina. And uh, the North Carolina DOT is going to be using SkyDio 2 drones in order to do inspections under bridges. Now, they have uh, over 10,000 bridges, it, it sounds like, in North Carolina. And, um, and obviously, the, the inspectors that have to inspect these bridges, they have to repel and basically go over the edge in a, some kind of a, a bucket or a nacelle and then dangle down on underneath the bridge and do all these inspections, which is, as you can imagine, very involved. So the, the DOT approached the FAA and said, listen, um, we're not really going to be flying all that far for visual line of sight. There is really not going to be any airplanes flying under the bridge. I'm guessing the conversation went like that. And, um, and we don't really need the, that fancy equipment to, uh, in order to find the other aircraft in the area. So the FAA came back and basically said that as long as the drone stays within 40 feet of the bridge itself, which is a pretty short distance, but you don't really need to go much further than that. And as long as you're within 1500 feet of the visual observer, of the, the remote pilot, then you basically good to go. And you can fly beyond visual line of sight using this drone. Now, the other issue that happens with drone inspections is one, uh, as soon as you get underneath the, 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 uh, the bridge, then you lose GPS connection, which for most drones is actually kind of a, a death sentence because they need GPS in order to operate. The SkyDio 2 actually doesn't need that. 
The other uh, issue is that we find electromagnetic inter interference uh, happens when you're getting close to such a large piece of concrete with rebar that creates a lot of interference. And, uh, and it looks like the Skydio 2, I didn't know that, the Skydio 2 is not really subject to these EMIs. So uh, all, hand in, you know, all in all, the, the, the Skydio 2 seems like a really good candidate to do these inspections. And also it has all these sensors to figure out where it is at all time and to avoid objects. So it's able to do a lot of autonomous flights and capture all these data for inspectors to review and get the inspections done beyond visual line of sight. So I thought this was a cool story. I, I, to, to me, this is a good indication that the FAA is thinking past the regulation and is, is uh, really adapting to the situation for each users. And this is a good sign, quite frankly, uh, that uh, these waivers are available to do this kind of work. And, uh, and this actually is gonna save life. There's uh, inspectors that die doing these bridge, bridge inspections. And uh, so hopefully that's gonna, if that can save somebody's life, that's a, a great result right here. The last thing, speaking of saving somebody's life or somebody's leg in this case, uh, there was a surfer in Australia that was uh, a certain, and he's a pro surfer. I don't know surfing all that well, but a uh, pro surfer that was uh, swimming around on his board and uh, a lifeguard happened to have, they, they're equipped with uh, drones that have uh, loudspeakers on them so they can help people in the water uh, by yelling at them, I guess. Uh, <laughs> and in this case, this uh, this lifeguard saw that there was a, a shark coming towards this uh, surfer and was able to warn him and then he was able to come back to shore. But the video is actually, you can see it playing right here. The video is, is quite interesting because you see the shark kind of speeding towards the surfer, going kind of toward his leg and then turning away at the last minute. Um, so a surfer was able to come back. He actually was shown the footage and, uh, and then I'm sure he went back in the water and did what he does. But uh, really interesting story. Great way of using drones, drone technology, and especially with a loudspeaker on top of it so that the lifeguard can actually relay information to anybody in the water. So that was cool. This is it, kind of a short day today. Um, the I will have some, hopefully some cool footage. I'm, I'm going away this weekend for, uh, for a few days and uh, hopefully collect some good footage from uh, further up in Utah. And, um, and well, we'll see what we get. It's gonna be interesting. There's a lot of national parks in the area, so not much that I can um, fly in into, unfortunately, but on the way, and, uh, and around, we'll see what kind of footage I can get. So with that being said, I will see you guys next week and uh, you have a great weekend.